We are starting the interview. I'm gonna I'm gonna call Mr. Hira. I don't want to see myself, but yes, 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 yes. Oh, let's see, let's see if we listen to him. Let's see if we listen to him. Wait a bit, wait a bit. Don't talk too much, Hira. Is is my or or, or maybe it's me? Is you some sound that is not? It's not really well. I should listen to you. Wait a sec. That are much more crazy. One second, one second, because I think we should be here. Yes. Now we are. Now we are with uh, with Hira, Mr. Hira. You can talk hello. to me, amigo. Hello, hello. I hear you perfect now. It was on my All end. Right. It wasn't you. Oh my god. Of course. I don't that make mistakes. That curtain is is epic. Huh? It's epic. <laughs> I really like it. I really like it. Thank you for coming, Mr. Hira. Thank you for having me. Uh, and it's uh, it's good to be back here. It's not the first time we're doing this. It's but, not. It's uh, not. <laughs> Let's go. And honestly, cool. after the first time, it's going to be easy to be a better interview. I mean, it was a good interview, but there was some uh, some cool stuff <laughs> that we, we talked before. We don't have to remind. If people want yeah. to know, they can check. They can check yeah. the, themselves in the previous one. <laughs> well, I, I just want to tell you, we talk often, but I want to tell you and uh, um, to the viewers too, uh, well, congratulations for all your what you achieved since the last interview, because it's like, and I put in quotes, you know that I like to call Leary the kid, but let's say that you were the kid back in the days, but, and now you are uh, let's say uh, not a kid anymore like you have grown a lot in the in the in the last one year right i am old man now um i mean i mean yeah i, I can say that i uh i became more like mature and stuff and uh been more calm so i guess like in that sense i've definitely become a bit older uh and yeah i have grown a mustache i see in the chat maybe that's <laughs> part of it <clears throat> but yeah i think um I think I mean it was an important like uh, year of my life, right? I was like going into university. Uh, I was <clears throat> like streaming a lot, taking it more seriously, and so there was a lot of things in my life that was um, a bit more like uh, like I had to start focusing up, you know. And so I think that that helped. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully that in your country, because we don't know that uh, this Corona thing is also uh, mm. getting okay, and you can you can do no normal stuff there. I, I want to ask you for for temple you know because congratulations you have a new a new team and i would like to know why you choose that organization and that you explain a little bit to us who they are like yeah explain to us to to introduce them yeah so i mean uh temple uh, is a professional esports organization they have uh, a lot of teams in different uh different games and uh i know them or i've heard of them personally from super smash i was following uh, the scene a few years ago, uh, not too closely, but here and there. So I've heard about the team beforehand, and uh, and the reason I chose the team is because um, what like we talked a few times, and what I was hearing is that they want to get involved in the scene and help out the community uh, and help us push from this kind of you know smaller community yet growing, smaller but growing, and help us kind of get to that next step of esports and at least play their part in that. Um, and so I figured it's. Uh, it's a big step for not only me and whoever else they decide to take as far as players and, and streamers and representatives, representatives, how do you say that? Um, but also they want to do stuff for the community and for the game itself. So it really does seem like a really nice fit uh, on paper. And uh, and so far, it's uh, it's been pretty exciting. A lot of it's new, so it, like I'm still discovering stuff and, and how it's all going to work. But um, it's exciting and it sounds really, really promising. Okay, do you think there? Well, maybe they, those are deeply details, and it's too early. Is there any possibility that maybe someone like Leary, MBL, or Nick, or someone else is going to jo join you in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very likely that we'll have more uh, either players or streamers that will sign with Tempo. Um, I think there's a few things that um, you know that they need to figure out because they're also coming in new to the scene. Uh, they have like watched the scene. Uh, it's been a few couple months, I think, at least that they've been interested or at least watching it closely. So they know a lot of the names, uh, at least the person I spoke to. Uh, and so it's possible that more people will join, but uh, that's something that time will tell. Um, uh, but yeah, I'd say keep an eye on it. And uh, as time passes, it's going to become a bit more clear. Okay. 
Hopefully, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Well, uh, yeah. what is? I mean, now it's coming Kino Desert Three. You always have loved the the the, the Arabia. Basically, everyone mm -hmm. loves that map. I know that you were not really happy, even if your level was different in, in Kino, during Kino Desert Two. Like, I I feel that you are now a much better player, right? Mm -hmm. As well. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I th I think I think I actually um, I see the game in a different view now compared to before. Because, I mean, a lot of time passed between King of the Desert 2 and, and now, right? It's been like a year and a half almost, right? Am I yes. correct in saying that? Yes, correct. Yeah, so uh, it has been a long time. I've played a lot of games since then. Um, I had opportunity to um, like, to adapt to the new game, DE, new meta, uh, constant patches. And I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, over the amount of games I played after DE released, it kind of let me adapt uh, a, new, a new play style almost and kind of get more used to the game. Um, yeah, as a whole, yeah. understand well, it more. It, it's great because uh, remember that in Bully, your playstyle was was different. Like you, you have uh, adapted so well. Like what is the the best uh, strategy for for the the current definitive edition? But do you have to adapt again now for Kino Desert Three because the map is different. Yeah, so that's a really good point. Um, I mean. I think like from Vubli to, to Definitive Edition, um, a lot of my playstyle adapted like slowly over time. Uh, I just the way I think about the game, but the adapt the adaptation I have to do for King of the Desert is not an overtime transition. It's a now transition because I have we saw the map but a, a week ago, so it's uh, a couple weeks ago. So it's something that I have to think about now myself as if it's a new map. Basically, it's not. It's we call it Arabia, but it's not really the Arabia we've been used to for the past year, at least, of Definitive Edition. This is something that's quite different. And um, I'm not going to reveal too much of what I think about the map and stuff, but I, I will say that it's going to take a lot of um, a lot of thinking, a lot of consideration, and a lot of practice behind the scenes. How, how do you feel more comfortable when you are playing? I mean, because I was watching yesterday one game. I think you were Bulgarians. What a great civilization, right? <laughs> and you were playing that's against true. Italians, right? Yeah. But but even like that, I mean, if you lost that game, it was kind of impressive how you could hold for that long. Because mm -hmm. honestly, uh, that civilization is. I mean, what I'm trying to ask is, do you feel that in 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 Imperial, if the game go the longer the game goes, better for you? I think my late game is pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm I'm very confident in late game macro style. Um, yeah, I th I think. I mean, I don't think I'm like the best in that or anything like that. So I don't think it's like a win condition. Like, okay, I get the late game and I win every time. But it's something that I think I'm very confident playing. And so if it gets the late game, I'm not scared of getting there. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I'm more than happy to play mid game, late game, whatever, whatever I need to do to win that particular matchup, I will, I will do. Okay. I want to ask you about your opponents. Who, who do you think is for you your, the hardest opponent uh, currently? Because a lot of people is now telling oh, Piper is not the, the best anymore <laughs> because it looks really, it really looks. Uh, that this King of the Desert 3 don't have that clear favorite like all the times? Um, well, I will agree that the favorite is not as clear these days. Like, that's, you know, I think that's pretty, that's a pretty good statement to make. But I still, I, I, I wouldn't listen too much to the, to the general, how do I want to phrase this? I wouldn't listen too much to the general kind of, uh, vague opinion that Viper is losing his touch like he's still the best player overall he's still the guy that can bring the highest level of competition overall to the to the to the game and so I think I think he's definitely the most dangerous opponent for me um, and if I had to name another two it's Liri and Yo I think Liri is very sharp with his army very aggressive um, and so he's also very dangerous and then Yo is very like he's he's pretty well rounded in the sense that he can play very aggressive, very messy styles, and then he could also play the the boom game in the macro and the late game. He's he's a very well rounded player, and he's also dangerous. So I think Viper is definitely the most dangerous, and then Liri and Yo uh, are the next two in line. I think I think it's the first time that most of the people, even the players itself, agree with the top four. Like I mean, maybe. You can say that because we we make the seeding how we did. If you won, for example, the the Wololo, the last Wololo, you would be the second seed. So it was for for almost nothing, you know. But it's like the, the first time that almost there was no no drama, let's say, with the seeding because like everyone considered okay, these players are in one level and then the others. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I mean, I think the results of 2020 speak for themselves, right? Like we had tons of tournaments in um, in the after the release of Definitive Edition. So in the past, I feel like it was a bit more ambiguous because we didn't have that many tournaments. We had like one here and there, and and a lot of the opinions were generated from rated games and from uh, who's playing better now on a day to day basis. But now you can almost disregard completely rated games because we have so many other sources of information on how players perform. If you just take a look at the tournament results of 2020, you will see that the five best performing is Viper, Leary, uh, myself, Yo, and Taro. Not in that order, but those five. And so uh, to me, based on the stats and based on how I feel playing against them, I think that's uh, Viper, Leary, and Yo are like the three hardest for me. Okay. And the stats back it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, and uh, I was asking, I, I want to know your opinion too, because it's a question important. I mean, do, do you feel that the balance for the civilizations now is in a good, uh, in a good momentum, let's say? Like, uh, and maybe it won't have that much impact like other tournaments, because remember the KOTD2? It's true that the rules were a little bit, eh, I can admit that, you know, that it was yeah. very risky, very risky. <laughs> yeah. Don't go into that. Okay, no? We can <laughs> you move. You <laughs> We can move. We can move <laughs> on the topic, okay? But but uh, the civilizations now will have that much impact uh, for in the tournament. Well, so after getting scammed by Mem in KOTD2, oh, let's just, damn it! Uh, <laughs> let's just remember that after the scam of KOTD2, the civs. Uh, so fast forward to KOTD3. I think the balance now is actually the best it's ever been for Age of Empires. It feels like it feels like there's like ten. 15 civs that are like all good and um there's you know civs that suit certain playstyles civs that suit certain maps uh of arabia obviously um and it's hard to really predict the draft of every player you know what i mean so i think back in the day everyone understood these five civs and these five civs are the best there's 10 civs that are clearly the best now i think there's 15 maybe even up to 20 that are pretty good so it makes it a lot harder to it makes it a lot harder to kind of um, predict what your opponent will do and a lot harder to, uh, or a lot less, you know, uh, either uh, mirror matches or sifts to contest for because there's so many options. Yeah, what, what do you think also that extra civilization that we had for Decided Game? Because in Decided uh, Game, yeah. there's now two civilizations left. Do mm -hmm. you like that? Do you think it's it make more interesting? Yeah, so the fact that you have an extra sieve for your whole draft to play with um, or to, to have just in case, I think that's actually a good thing because, um, like you said, the deciding game is like, if you don't have that, it's obvious what sieve is going to be. It's the only one. But now you have a little bit of more, more mind game, which I think is good. And also, I kind of like having the extra sieve in the draft because let's say I pick a sieve number two in my draft. I, I go, I pick one sieve, then I pick another sieve. And then he counters that sieve with a, f a couple of his sieves. So then, okay, I can be like, okay, I don't want to use that one anymore. I'll use another one. So it kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility. And I think that smart players can use that flexibility to their advantage a bit more. So I think it rewards people who are smart and people who uh, think about the draft properly. Yeah, and maybe a decided game, uh, you, you didn't get your best sieve there. And then there is a coin that, that you are <laughs> that you put yeah. there in, and you are starting the game like with the mindset like, ah, I have that sieve and you are starting. But with two, maybe maybe it's different as a well. Bit more options. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about the, 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 yeah, the, the mentality. I mean, how do you... Do you have something so routine to, to start the, the games in tournaments? Something that you like to, to do personally or... It depends. I mean, you notice the day like when you're going to play, oof, today I don't feel that great. Uh, uh, like to, to, how's to... the mentality? Yeah. Um, like... <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think the I think the mentality, as you're saying, is is actually a very important part of the tournament. That you can't you can't go in feeling like either not confident or tired or whatever the case may be. Obviously, you could be tired from external like affairs if you worked a lot the day before or if you had school the day of but try to schedule properly obviously make sure that you're not uh, going into it tired but as far as mentality in terms of confidence i think you have to go into it confident you have to go into it like you're gonna play your best and you're gonna beat your opponent and uh and don't think too much of what's at stake especially i have to talk about this because king of the desert now has the biggest first place prize i've ever seen personally in a tournament and um and it's you know it has a big overall price pool of 50 50k plus 
so you can't think too much of what's at stake and what you can lose, but rather just play it for the moment. So I'm playing a, a best of three versus an opponent. I'm not playing for 50,000. That's what I think, yeah. basically. Yeah, okay. And going confident. I like that. Um, what frustrates you, I mean, or, or, or makes you feel, for example, if you are going to, to, to play against some top player or, or someone that you feel favorite, but when you're playing, you're trying to play your best, what it makes you feel frustrated? Like, uh, well, if you have a hole uh, and then you get a villain and then all the archers to... That's one thing that is unfortunate, right? Or or that you feel like you got a right, the right strategy and, and the execution. I mean, what is what makes you feel like your mentality changed for the next game? Like it's going to affect mm -hmm. you if there is something that is going to affect you more. Honestly, this is, a, this is a weird one because people who see me on stream a lot, I always like, I always react a lot to things like, I'll be like, oh, I lost a vill to the boar. <laughs> Oh, my opponent got lucky. Like this map sucks, but like in tournaments when I play offline, um, I don't react to these kind of things in the same way. I'm way, way, way more composed, and it's not so much like, oh, this bat, this happened. I'm so mad. It's like, oh, this happened. Let's try to adapt. Let's try to play the best strategy from now to win. And then I do my best in that game. If I end up losing that game, I just forget about it. Go wash my face if I need to. Go walk around. Uh, forget about the last game and focus for the next one. I, I usually don't tilt at all in offline tournaments. Not but even for, a little bit. For these offline tournaments, because, I mean, you know that if I'm doing a so much, I will never make, for example, that the players cannot stream. But mm -hmm. I like that in these huge tournaments, the players are completely focused. D do you feel that is good for your gameplay? Uh, be course. completely focused? Of course. Uh, I play like a bot when I stream. I'm like extreme <laughs> AI point, point two, like... <laughs> it's not Hit a bot guys Hit yeah. a bot. <laughs> i'm like barbarian bot hero bot and that's how i play basically but uh um yeah so i think playing offline it's much more focused uh, i pay attention to even the details like if i stream i i don't care what my opponent is like uh, his where his wood is most of the time i'm just kind of chilling and and i just play like a random strategy and the goal is to play to win but also to have like some fun and talk to chat and whatnot but in the game of tournament offline I pay attention to every little detail, or at least I try to. I look at his gold, his his deer. Is he learning deer? Is he scouting? Um, you know, did he take the ten gold for the drush? Um, is he taking the forward wood line, the back wood line? All these little things that you don't normally consider, or some of them you don't normally consider in streaming, you always consider them in offline. So, yeah. Well, your results be in the, with the offline tournaments are being great, be mm -hmm. really good because uh, you are almost there. I, I told yeah. you, I, told, yeah. I mean, it's it's a, because you. I mean, you have got some also wins in, let's say, minor tournament, but some good wins as well this year. Don't forget the Arabian Invitational, if I'm not wrong. The KOTD mm -hmm. Express as well, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, but what will be, what will make you happy with this tournament, with KOTD3? What result uh, will make you happy? <laughs> so, okay, I have, I have two in mind. Like, like, obviously now, since I'm still in it, I want to be like, this is the tournament I want to win. Not only because I kind of lacking that big tournament win, um, but also because Arabia is kind of like my favorite map as a player and the settings that I feel the most fun with. So if I can win the tournament, it'll be like, it'll feel good. Not only that I won the big tournament and I got the big prize and you know I, I now have that under my belt, but also because I really love these settings. I play it every day and I can... And I show that I can actually bring results with them. Um, so that would be like a double positive there. Uh, and also another reason is my first big tournament with the new team Tempo. So I think starting off on the right foot there, getting that big tournament win would be pretty cool. Showing off the new team as well and uh, and kind of proving that it was a good decision for them to take me. Um, so that's another thing in it. If I can't get the first place, um, let's say we're talking after the fact, I would be happy with anything semifinals or above. I think that's okay. the... That's the level I've been hitting across the year. I don't think I've played any tournament where I was less than semifinal. No flex, but... Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty good stat. I'm proud of it. Uh, and so I think I want to continue that that stat as well. Keep that the semifinals stat. and above. But it's, it's not like a little bit... Um, uh, I don't know if weird is the word. like Because it's motivation, but also a little bit more pressure. I mean, about tempo, representing tempo, all that, mm -hmm. uh, you know? Do you think that um, kind of two two feelings 
can affect your gameplay or you, you think that you can control that properly? Uh, I don't think being in a new team is is going to change my mentality for the tournament. I think that's just a kind of on the side to talk about it afterwards. But I don't think that's something I'm thinking about before or yeah. during it. Um, it's not. I'm not going to be extra nervous because of that, no. Who are you? Are you Hira, really? How old are you <laughs> now, man? 30? 35? <laughs> Hira? What is this, man? Uh, one year and a half ago, you will be, you will be, man, but don't ask me this. <laughs> you know? And now, yeah, but, yeah. but this is, this is the progress. You, 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 in my opinion, you should be proud of, of that. No, but, but mm. you understand what I mean? It's, of course, it, it yeah. was more, it was more like this. I'm yeah. telling you kind of joking, but it was, your reaction sure. would be completely different than that question. Uh, For sure. 16 months ago. I mean, like, I talk about this a lot though, but uh, like, I used to be really nervous in tournaments, which I think is normal for a lot of people. I'm not saying I don't get nervous at all now. There is some nerves, you know, especially in good. the later stages. Yeah, it, it's good. Like going into something a little bit nervous is good. It makes you're human, right? Like it's an impossible to be like. Yeah, exactly. Focus. Yeah, but like, so I'm not like a stone cold robot, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's not something beforehand. Me being nervous would actually impact my my level like my play so i i feel like i'm shaking i feel like i can't control my army like i normally do because I, I don't have that kind of uh confidence but now um you know over time as i got more and more a tournament practice just playing more tournaments and better results in tournaments help me help me be more confident and therefore less nervous going into the the rounds of the tournament so Definitely okay. not a robot now. Uh, still, <laughs> still nervous to some small degree, but um, definitely nothing like beforehand. Nothing like okay. beforehand. Let, let's talk a little bit more about the rest of the tournament. You are happy with this, with the tournament settings this year? Uh there's two things that come to mind: the map and the and the uh, draft, and I like both. <laughs> I like nah, both. After my scam <laughs> last year? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, compensate, you, compensate. Yeah, you compensate, uh, but uh, but we'll see where I place. If I lose in, in an early round, then I'll blame you anyways, obviously. Um, but, yeah, uh, well, um, I take the blame. I take the blame. <laughs> e no problem. Easier to blame them than me, but uh, no, but for real, um, the, the map, I haven't discovered it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not, I haven't found the secret formula to it, but it seems much more open, much more... It, it feels like it, it's going to reward aggressive playstyle, um, and so I think that's something that's interesting for the game. That's what the game needs to become this kind of like esports kind of game where it's like even the the uh, you know a large majority of, of different audience casuals, uh, play, people who play every day, everyone can enjoy it because of the fast pace um, that it has. So I think KOTD, the map itself brings about that kind of playstyle. And that's exciting. Um, and then the draft is really nice. Um, and then no complaints there. We had we had a couple of tournaments that were hidden pick this this um, uh, this year. And I think in general, I prefer hidden pick a little bit more. But since we only have one map for Arabia, it makes much more sense to have draft. And so therefore, I like the fact that we have a draft. Because if it was okay. just hidden pick for Arabia, we'd see a lot of mirror matches potentially. So Most yeah. of them. Yeah. So, so the fact that we have a draft makes it... Makes it very nice. So yeah, well, love the I, I really like so much how you like the map because you have been changed your gameplay. And I'm not telling that you have been a macro player, but you have been more macro player lately. Mm -hmm. And maybe this map, as you say, maybe we, we, we are going to discover, maybe it's not going to benefit that macro style. But even like that, you you like that map. So I, I really like how you, you say that because... Well, because like you said, it's better to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, for, for also for the sport organization. You can see how Red Bull is is doing <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the as fast as possible, bam. Yeah. Empire exactly. Wars. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's an emphasis on fast paced kind of games. No and by fast paced, we don't necessarily mean that there has to be action twenty four seven, but the the walling to castle when and then booming after that, when nothing really happens till thirty minutes. No one really. That's not a kind of style that will ever attract different audience and and more audiences uh, or more people. So like viewers, I mean. Um, and so, like having the quick out the gates feudal action that we will see a lot in KOTD, Dark Age feudal age action would be really nice for that. It's kind of matching that Red Bull style in the in the Empire War. Um, but yeah, I think like in general, a lot of people see me as a defensive player. But honestly, I don't think I have like a problem playing aggressive 
styles as well. I just think that I just think that the a lot of the maps that I play on ranked games and on other tournaments favor defensive play, so I adapt yeah. for that. The one thing I have to be careful though is that I played a lot of games on this kind of defensive style. So I hope I don't like autopilot towards the defensive style and get punished in KOTD. I have to make sure I'm I'm I remember to play aggressively, pay with you know as much army as I need, n- not try to rely on on walls like I I did for other tournaments. But I think I should be able to adapt really fine, and I, I like aggressive gameplay. Like it's not something I'm 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 new to, and it's not something I'm scared of. So I think I'm, I'm people, uh, you know, that we have talked about that in private, but uh, I think people will get surprised about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, remind, uh, related to that, I think people will get surprised because you are not gonna play uh, the same. I'm sure about that. In my opinion, that's opinion. I mean, look how you smile because you're thinking, yeah, you will see, guys, yeah. you will see, uh, you will see. Anyway, uh, I want to ask you now about the, all the players in the tournament. You know, a little bit more. No? Any player? I asked that that to Viper yesterday. Do you see someone that can be a surprise in the tournament, like an upset here in uh, in in the tournament? Um. At least in the first round, you know, for example, yeah. uh, and then maybe they can go to the top sixteen and make some really good, uh, good tournament that we don't expect. Do you see anyone yeah. that can shine? So I don't remember. I don't remember the whole bracket. I did go through it and make a video about it, but um, I don't remember the whole bracket off the top of my head. However, I will say that I do remember a lot of nice round ones where I cannot really predict the winner. And so, if maybe I'm not going to see any huge upset. We're at least gonna see rounds in round one that either player can win, and and it's really hard to predict for sure who is gonna come out on top. And so, um, I think that's really exciting for the tournament, especially the round one, where in other tournaments maybe the round one is not that exciting because it's usually just you know good players beating less less good players. But in this round one, it feels like there's a lot more close matches, and that's super exciting. As far as like big upsets, um. If there's one, if there's a couple players I want to see do well, it's Daniel, um, Project Belgium, um, Dark. These kind of I don't want to say younger players because I mean Dark is young, but uh, but Daniel and Belgium they're in their twenties. It's not about age, but it's more about like getting their first uh, solid tournament results. Like especially for Daniel, who has I think struggled with if it's nerves or something in the past for other tournaments. I think his skill level has been really high for a while. He just needs that extra confidence behind it. So I think I'm hoping he would do really well in, in King of the Desert, beat Jordan in that round one, and um, and potentially make the group stage would be, I think, huge for him as a player. So I really oh. want to see that. Being this level, just look that we are talking about close series in the round one with 64. It's double the mm-hmm. players that the previous edition. So that's a good, uh, uh, I would say, a huge step for the community, no? Yeah, I mean the like the, the, the play across the board with Definitive Edition, everyone got way better. Like, even when I play now, like on rank games, when I'm not focused completely, I get frustrated sometimes because I, I lose a game to you know let's say uh, a player I feel like I shouldn't lose, but it's because if I don't focus 100 percent now, or if I don't focus enough, I will lose. Like players can win against uh, against you know pro player like these up and coming players can win against pro players in rank ladder. If the pros aren't focusing 100%, obviously it's different for tournaments because the pros will be playing their their best supposedly. So it's going to be hard for them to upset, but it's something that now that the, the level of play has raised, it could happen. I do think that okay. everyone got a lot better. Okay. Do do you think hard uh, it's really to be doubt? I think that's a really close matchup. Yeah. I mean, I've 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 practiced with hard uh, a couple games, a few games uh, in you know in the um, in the background, uh, privately, and his level seems to be pretty solid. He obviously came back very recently, so it's it's it might be still like um, he he might have needed more time to get to practice for the tournament. If he had more time, it'd be better for him. But I do feel like his current level is quite solid, and I expect a really close series between him and Dallas. Like I don't, I I, I don't know who's gonna win that one. Um, it's one of the better round ones, and I think I think Hart could, could win that one. Um, okay. But doubt, but doubt is obviously a really really strong player, and so I would still definitely consider it an upset if Hart won. Doubt is the favorite there, but you know it should be really interesting. Okay. About uh, the the favorite is going back uh, uh, 
to the favorite game, uh, you basically say that yeah, that you cannot underestimate uh, definitely Viper. But do do you think uh, that Viper? Or who, who do you think for you is uh, this enemy? I don't want to to see till 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 the till the grand final. Like, uh, or I prefer to avoid. If there's someone that you think like, or you don't want to give details about that. No, it's not about giving details. I just like. I don't think like that. I think if if you want to win the tournament, you have to play against anyone. So I don't care when I face whoever. It doesn't yeah. matter to me. I play whoever, whenever. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm, I'm, I thought I was an interview here, but he's, he's not here, <laughs> man. I'm telling you. It's, it's a yeah. smurf. <laughs> it's a smurf. Akira. I'm smurfing it's a smurf. interview. Well, huh? I got the same question in Red Bull tournament. Uh, you, you tournament hosts love asking this question, but uh, I don't know what, others, what other people answer to it. But honestly, I, I don't... I don't see the idea of like hiding from opponents or anything like that, or like wanting to avoid an opponent. Like you're gonna have to play anyone, anyways, to win. So might as well just play. Yeah, them that's whatever. true. Yeah. That's true. But sometimes it happens that the, maybe in the other semifinal, one player that uh, his style doesn't suit you and he loses, so you don't have to face him. So and it's benefit the, the the player. So for that reason, sometimes the player uh, might uh, might answer like, uh, "No, I prefer to avoid this because if he's losing in previous round, better for me." That yeah, can happen. I, I, I guess I definitely see that mentality. But at the same time, like the players that I consider um, to be like the hard, the really hard rounds, um, there there's like a bunch of them. So there's like a few that will be really hard rounds. So if I get this guy or this guy, both will be hard anyway. You know what I mean? So. It's not like it's not like I would get the easier route this way. So, yeah. yeah. Well, to answer your I'm, question, I don't. I don't have any preference. Like, well, th this interview just motivated me even more as organizer <laughs> and, and caster because I feel that the the level of, of the games is gonna be uh, a bomb. I don't know if you mm -hmm. have that feeling. Is it's gonna be so high level gameplay? Mm -hmm. I, I'm feeling how the players are uh, now playing and how close the players are and. I don't know if you have that feeling as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I talked before about the player, the the level rising at the at you know, at like the lower levels, you know, the top, the top thirty, top forty, those guys improved, but also the top eight, that level improved a lot, um, and people are playing much sharper now than than before. So I definitely think the level is very close, and uh, and it seems like there's like so many players that like it feels like every round is going to be losable. You know what I mean? Um, there's not really a round that's going to be like a free pass, maybe besides the first one or two. But after you get to the group stage, every game will be hard, every single one. So, and you It'll can't uh, you can't give a chance to to, to a single one. It can be can there's no ball, right? Exactly. Yeah. And like <laughs> these players are are not uh, are not uh, inexperienced and they're not you know bad players. So as soon as you start you know dropping a couple games here and there in the group stage, right, it's like a double elimination, I guess. Um, you you know, there's danger you get knocked out. You remember you yeah. Do you remember potentially what can be your group? Your group is stage yeah, potentially? It's, in it's theory? Vivi, Vivi, Tato, myself, and uh, who else? Who was the, the, the last one? Let's see. It was Viles? Matt? Viles? Oh, yeah, v or, maybe. It was Viles, I think. I Maybe. think it, potentially it, it was be less. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I thought I'm, I'm sure that people will say in the in the chat if it was be less of them. I think it was one finish. Yeah. I think it was one finish. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check some question for the chat. I mean, okay. for for now is 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 a note from me. I got all, all the answer. <laughs> what what do you, what do you think about MBL form? If people want to know in the chat, I see a lot of uh, questions form? about MBL form. Yeah. Uh I mean MBL. Is I think MBL is playing solid these days. Um, I mean, he's been, he has been playing pretty well, like th like for a while now. Uh, he's always been a good player. Um, I think his his best map is probably Arabia in the end. So in the end, at the end of the day, so I think he'll be like a pretty dangerous player. Um, I think yeah. Oh oh. Hello, ma'am daughter. Okay, okay. Is my daughter bringing me the the dinner? She was so happy. The dinner, the dinner <laughs> for you. So this time happened to me. Okay, Hira, like yeah, in the yeah. interview. Now it's my daughter. And when I it's say not... when I say her, it was like, oh, sorry. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Keep going. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no worries. No worries at all. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah, MBL definitely is a solid player. And on Arabia, he's very comfortable there. Um, I think he probably should like start taking. Um, like he should start preparing more for tournaments in the sense that having the right mindset 
not doing anything the day before that will hinder your performance the next day. Um, so I think if he just like brings a, a more professional mindset to the table, he would have a if you have a good run for this one. Okay. Well, that's 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 a question that I see in the chat that maybe he don't want to ask because it can give some insight for the game. For example, do you think that with that map the Aztecs might be not as dangerous with that map? Well, uh, I think Aztecs are still pretty good. Yeah. I think Aztecs are still really good. So difficult. This civilization, always dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can have a map with anything on it and Aztecs would be like really, really good stuff there. So, um, yeah, I think Aztecs will still be uh, dangerous in the right hands. Okay. Well, nah, come on. <laughs> to move to move a little bit to your right, to your right, because people want to see all the curtains. Come on, the stop trolling, too. guys. Stop trolling. I'm sure that they can. They, they have seen in your in your channel. I love, no, no, come, come, come here. Now I only see your microphone. Come here. <laughs> that's for the uh, chat, though. They, they like that. They like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Do you think now we can finally see a little bit more uh, scouts, uh, scouts in feudal, scout civilizations, night civilizations, because the pathing has been improved a little bit uh, and because of the map? Because it's true that we have seen a lot uh, militias, archers, or militias even transition to castles. What do you think? Um, I mean, I hope my opponents will not be fully walled minute six if I go for scouts. Like that's like the main thing. Every time I play rank ladder and I go for scouts, my opponent's fully fully walled and he's in imperial age by the time I get there. So obviously, scouts with the with the more open map will have some potential at least. Uh, the pathing path is fixed. The pathing path being fixed affects knights more though. Now we might see knights actually be able to take good fights versus uh, crossbow. The pathing path is actually very good now, in my opinion. The best it's been since DE came out. Um, so yeah, I think, I think with open maps we could see more scouts, and um, I, I mean I don't know if like scouts would be like the most dominant strategy. I don't know yet, honestly. I'm not trying to hide anything. I don't know if it's gonna be the, the best strategy, but it's definitely much more viable now, and uh, and especially Knights and Castage can path properly now. So okay. it, it opens up to more options for sure. Okay, well, Mr. Kira, because we are already talking a lot, I think we have covered almost everything related to the tournament. I just wanted mm -hmm. to tell you that I would love to co-cast with you in the tournament, mm -hmm. but you don't want to co-cast with me because that means <laughs> you will be super, super, super ahead in the tournament. So since mm -hmm. I wish you the best luck, I hope that we are not going to co-cast in this tournament, okay? <laughs> All right, sounds good. But uh, wait, actually, can't we like... Oh no no the, the the finals will be or all the games will be live but can't like I cast a quarter final together if it's on the other side or something like that yeah Maybe. we we can cast something maybe we can cast yeah, okay. something some quarter okay. final or something if you are still also yeah. in the in the tournament maybe if you play the first series and then there is yeah. a last series or something we can co cast yeah. well that's so yeah. kind for you <laughs> yeah you want mean, to, it, well we co cast and we have a lot of fun together co casting yeah, yeah. so I would love to co cast that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. I feel like we did like one for every for most every tournament. tournaments. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so it would be fun to do another one. And uh, but I'm not gonna cast the finals with you, man. That's something I'm gonna tell you for now. Okay. And yeah. and honestly, now that nobody okay. listen, I don't dislike your sellout at all. You know, <laughs> so you, you can come. You know. <laughs> of no, course, seriously. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Okay, Hira, and and wish you the best luck. Hopefully you are not too tired because I noticed that are you tired right now with with the studies with the stream with everything it might be uh, stressful a little, a little now. I have a really busy schedule, so even like the simplest tasks, I have to like put them in my schedule to make sure I don't get overwhelmed and to make sure I get time to do everything. So like especially I have so many things going on in the background. I have got school. Like today I have two cl two classes, and in the middle oh. I have this interview. So oh wow, uh, uh, do you have yeah. another class now? afterwards yeah so okay okay well take <laughs> so care I am then very busy i am very busy take care then and be informed don't don't make a schedule if you are tired talk rick Crassini and all will be good okay <laughs> yeah exactly i'm gonna make sure that i fit everything that uh, i'll be you know in good shape to play and and it should be a good good tournament i'm very excited for it and thank you uh man for having me as well for the interview it's a pleasure man thank you so much for coming and Really, really good luck, Mr. Hira. Bye-bye, man. My pleasure. Take it easy. Bye, chat. Bye, man. See ya. Bye-bye, man. Bye-bye. Well, guys, this is this is Mr. Hira. I noticed a little bit that he was a little bit uh, tired. Um, hopefully, you have enjoyed with the, with the interview. <sighs> He's going to be a beast. A real beast in the tournament. I can't wait for watch uh, King of the Desert 3. It's going to be... Absolutely epic, amigos.